Hey everybody, on this episode, we're gonna answer one big question for PTs that are about to graduate from school. Essentially, what are some of the mistakes we've made? What are some of the things we'd recommend that you do? So learn from us, some of the good, some of the bad. We'll share with you on this episode. The Ask Mike Reinhold Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, episode six, Return of the Jedi. I guess yeah. we're really not. We're cooler than this. Yeah, I think we're. I'm more of a Star this. Trek kind of guy. You know. <laughs> you are the, really. No. That is not cooler. No. No way is Star Trek cooler than Star Wars. I'm, I'm, crea- I'm, I'm creating a huge, huge online rift right now. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome back, guys. Uh, the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're here uh, at Champion PT and Performance up in Boston. Uh, Lenny McCreen and I are uh, here to ask some questions. We have one of our students from Armstrong Physical Therapy here. Gabe's in the house. What up? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Gabe? <laughs> um, Gabe is here to, to help us with your questions. So I um, uh, hope you're enjoying the show. Um, we'll start asking today. I think today we're just going to do one because I think we just we thought it was kind of a cool question that's gonna has a lot of good a lot of good benefits for some of the young people here, the, the, the students, the new grads, those types of things. But Gabe, shoot away. What do we got? All right. TJ Martino from Marlboro, New Jersey. He asks, I will be graduating PT school next May, and I'm wondering what recommendations you have for new graduates. What were some mistakes you made during your first year as a PT, and some good and or bad decisions you made? No, all right, maybe we'll go back and forth on this one. We'll go back and forth. So we have, um, um, you want to just tell them, give us five minutes? Yeah. I pause so I know when to edit. <laughs> That's why we need those blinds open. Yeah. But um, nah, I'll edit it. We'll figure it out. Um, all right. So uh, it's a good question. Maybe we'll go back and forth. Um, you know, from from the perspective here, things I'd do different because I do talk about this. That's a good question, though. But congrats, TJ, on graduating. Uh, I guess a lot of people are going to be graduating pretty soon. So um, let's see. Let's go back and forth. I got one off the top of my head. So things I would do different if I were you. I would say number one for me that I would do different was learn as much manual therapy as I can at the beginning. And what I mean by that is maybe even just some soft tissue work and different ways to do that. So for me, I do a bunch of stuff. I do instrument assisted work. I do some trigger point work. I do like ART based pin and stretch. Um, I, I do a bunch of stuff like that. But I would say that or my first half or whatever third, I don't know, of my career, I didn't do as much hands-on soft tissue. We do a lot of hands-on for strengthening and stability, but not as much soft tissue. And I think my outcomes and my just, just how well I, d- I did as a clinician just skyrocketed the second I started doing more soft tissue work. So I'd say number one for me is to, is to seek that out. And remember, you don't have to just learn from PT people. You know, manual therapy doesn't mean going to a mulligan course or, or you know, McKenzie or Paris or something. Those things are fine if you want to do that. But I mean like soft tissue Work. So you can learn from the massage field, you know, the soft tissue people. But I would say one thing I regret was it was taking me so long to get into that. It's a good answer. I think it kind of <laughs> comes off of uh, both of us growing up as PTs in Birmingham. You get you get kind of stuck in your rut of we did a lot of post ops, we did a lot of sports, it's true. And you get kind of I don't want to say complacent, but you get this pigeonhole the term where you just get. Um, one type of client and then you get somebody on your schedule that's like for me it was like low back pain you like freak out like, I don't know how to treat this we used to have a spine department in, in Birmingham and the spine department would handle all that stuff so uh, I think using as many tools as you can I hate this whole tool tool bag tools in the tool bag thing um, so I'm not gonna say it even though I just said it uh, but I think having all these different areas that tool. you can t- called tools, <laughs> but having all this other knowledge that you're just kind of pigeonholing yourself into, I just do post-ops. And I'm still in that challenge of trying to um, overcome 
uh, my my Birmingham where I was just doing one thing. And so I think taking other courses and, and speaking to other therapists and just kind of connecting with other people I think is going to be huge to get other perspectives because you can easily start treating like your peers in the clinic and you start seeing everybody do the same thing. It's actually pretty comical to see everybody treating the same way in a, in a PT true. clinic. It's, it's amazing the copycats that occur because it's easier. It's easier to do that. All right, so I would say then my next thing, I'm thinking too, like, so I'm thinking what, what not mistakes, how would I do things different? So right. I guess the next thing I would do, not that I would do different, I, it's, I guess things I've started doing later in my career, so you should start doing them earlier, learn from our mistakes. Right. Um, but one is, um, is learning from multiple disciplines to kind of piggyback on what I said before with the soft tissue work. Um, I've learned just as much, if not more, from the strength coach community, the personal trainers, the soft tissue workers, the body workers, all those people, and it's putting all that stuff together and learning from multiple disciplines, I would yeah. say. Um, don't feel like you have to just stick to PT courses, like sometimes the other disciplines put it together. You know, we learn from, from everybody, baseball coaches, everything, we kind of put it together. Yeah. So, all right, and your and turn. Even, and even the business side, even if you, if that's your, uh, that's your goal some days, to have your own PT clinic, I would chat with your, with your manager, chat with your reach, your reach regional manager, maybe get access to uh, some of the business aspects of because even if you don't get into it, it's just interesting to see that. What makes the clinic function? You know, what a budget, how do you create a budget, how do you do all that stuff? And I did all that stuff before I left uh, Alabama and intentionally I wanted to know all that stuff. I wanted to get a feel of, you know, um, of, of just not treating but also getting the, all, the other aspect too and how to, how to run a business. So I think uh, just getting your hands dirty with little other projects. I think it's, it's huge for a, for a young PT, yeah. even an older PT. Right. Um, all right, let's see, next one. I, say, I think here's a good thing that I did, that I learned. This was part of how we grew up, and this is a good one. You know, Gabe and I were talking about this the other day, but how I grew up in my professional career was working my tail off. You know, essentially it was, um, you know, we grew up in a very educational environment. Um, so, you know, we had, you know, meetings twice a week with all the fellows there as part of the education. So at ASMI down in Birmingham, we had all, the, all this fellowship education that they had where they, they were they would get an hour twice a week on Mondays and Fridays. And by the way, shameless plug, all those videos are on rehabwebinars.com. <laughs> but um, it, it's the people don't realize that that's a, just an entire sports medicine fellowship program essentially that's in there. So all those ASMI videos, we learned that. But what it did is I saw you know Dr. Andrews, I saw Kevin Wilk go to these conferences every every week, yeah. and they're you know Dr. Andrews is in his 60s at the time and 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 still committing himself to continue learning. So I'd say one of the best things I did is we just committed ourselves to continue to learn, like always reading. You know if you're a nine to five kind of guy, um, that that's when you that's when you treat people that's when you work with clients that's when you train people it's nine to five you learn on your own time and people need to think and students need to think that that's an investment in yourself so don't feel like oh I don't want to waste my time on that stuff no you got to make yourself better in that downtime yeah my big thing when I first got to Alabama and knew I had opportunities and I got down there for a reason it wasn't just to be the nine to five guy I needed to get out of my company you were the 10 to 7 guy I was I was actually the 10 to 7 guy <laughs> really yes I was I think I, I, I think I did the schedule the for a while grad, I got Sorry. the bad schedule um, for some it's the bad schedule um, I like 10 to 7 now yeah, it, it's kind of my schedule now <laughs> ironically but I think getting out of your comfort zone so my big thing I needed to take advantage of Alabama and what it could bring to me and for me it was doing public speaking and so I would do that I, I think my first thing I did was those one hour little Monday night Friday morning talks to the fellows and the in the surgeons like the attendings Dr. Andrews and Dr. Kane Dr. Dugas uh, that are in Alabama and they they see you they see you making the effort they see you having confidence in your topics and next thing you know they're sending you clients or they're coming to you for advice on one of their patients that may be struggling or they want that patient or their family member to see you that's huge it's such it's so flattering when like Dr. Andrews says no I want like my daughter to see you for her you know, meniscal or whatever, or something, you know, it's, it's, so little things like that. So where you're what can somebody do? Like, how do they do that though? Right. So you, know? you need to go to meetings and, and talk to the people that are putting the meetings on or creating a podcast or doing something where you are being visually seen, getting comfortable in front of the camera. Um, and then word spreads, word gets out. And then you start getting, you get involved with social media and word gets out that you can do a weekend course on a shoulder or a knee. And that's how I've kind of gotten my my name out who's now through social media now that I've left Alabama and now um, you know I got a couple of gigs this coming in just because of that it's just word gets out that you have a uh, uh, have a presence you have the knowledge and you want to share it and you're comfortable sharing it and 
you know, so you gotta really get the get your name out on social media. I think that's a big thing. Well, there's a good way and a bad way to get your name out on social media, but I think not to paraphrase Lenny, but you made you're starting to make me think. I think it's by trying to educate and share content and do stuff like that. Not only does it keep you sharp. You know, and it helps you learn a little right. bit here, but it establishes yourself as a little bit more of an authority. Yeah. So, you know, have that presence because you want to share some of that content. Right. It's just so. being being loud on social media, not being annoying on social media, <laughs> but being loud on social media is a big am difference. I, am I loud on um, social media? Yeah. I don't think I'm loud. Not loud. Am no. I loud? Do you think I'm loud? <laughs> I don't think I'm loud. Is it's Lenny loud? He's a presence. I can be loud. No, I'm not loud. I... I know my bounds. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, thank. I mean, we could talk about that topic a lot, and I think we get a bunch of we get a bunch of student yeah. questions like that. But I'd say you know you know some of the key things we did here is just always keep learning, learn from multiple disciplines, um, and make sure that you are um, you know. What would we say? I don't even remember. Learn from multiple disciplines. Just keep learning, keep learning, and yeah, keep sharing. Comfort zone, yeah, share. share. And I think that's what's going to help. Just do it's that. Huge and it, trust me, that's, it, can, it will lead to things. It's a good place to start. Let's not get overwhelmed. Don't go to you know a freaking course every weekend. Just you'll get yes. there. So well, thanks so much, guys. Another good episode. Um, again, help us. We need some good reviews. Uh, rate us on iTunes and stuff like that. Uh, subscribe to our podcast, and we're just going to keep growing this and keep uh, keep doing it. So uh, give us some advice. If you have any suggestions or feedback, leave it to us. But more importantly, ask us questions. So MikeRinald.com slash podcast or use the uh, Twitter hashtag uh, AskMikeRinald and we'll, we'll answer your questions. We'll, we'll do the best we can. So, again, thanks so much. Thanks, guys.